Hi. In this video lecture, we will go through the our third colligative property, which is depression in freezing point. Right. So we know that freezing point is the temperature at which the liquid form will change into the solid form. And the temperature at which the liquid form will change into the solid form is the freezing point. Now depression in freezing point is the further decrease in the freezing point of the solvent, right? Because we know that the liquid form will change into solid form at a particular temperature, right? Now if due to something this temperature further goes down, that is it decreases, then this, this is known as the depression in freezing point. And as we said that the depression in freezing point is a colligative property, that means it depends upon the number of solute particles added, right? So now let's understand what causes the addition of the solute, right? That causes this depression in freezing point, right? So depression in freezing point is caused by the addition of solute to the solvent. So the freezing point of solution is always less than that of pure solvent, right? So if you look at the definition, the freezing point is defined as the temperature at which the solid and the liquid states are in equilibrium, right? When liquid will start changing into solid form, both are in equilibrium and both have the same vapor pressure. Right now, let's quickly understand what causes the addition of solute to decrease the freezing point of solution. We know that the freezing occurs when the temperature of the surrounding is lower down, right? So when the temperature of the surrounding is lower down, what happens to the liquid molecules, right? Due to which the freezing point decreases further. Since we know that if this is the liquid, right? If this is the liquid molecules that are freely moving, right? Now, if we decrease the temperature of the surrounding of this container, the molecules of this liquid will, will slow down, right? Why? Because the kinetic energy of these molecules will decrease, right? And we know that kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature, right? So when temperature will decrease, kinetic energy will decrease due to which these molecules will slow down, right? And we know that there are intermolecular forces of attraction, right? Intermolecular forces that is acting between these liquid molecules, right? And if you just recall what we have done in elevation in boiling point, when the solute was added to the pure solvent, we have to heat the solution to a higher temperature, right? So as to make its vapor pressure equal to the atmospheric pressure. So the solution boils at a higher higher temperature, which results into the elevation in boiling point. And when, when we heated the liquid or the solution, when we heated the solution, the kinetic energy of the liquid molecules increased due to which some of the liquid molecules from the surface of the liquid escape into the vapor state, right? So there, when the temperature was increased, the kinetic energy of the molecules was increased due to which the molecules passed into the vapor state, right? So molecules, there the kinetic energy of the molecules increased due to which they, start, they started moving at a faster speed. Now in this, everything happens in the reverse direction. Here, we are lowering down the temperature. So the kinetic energy will decrease, right? And in the elevation of boiling point, when the liquid molecules escaped into the liquid, I'm sorry, escaped into the vapor state, it overcome the intermolecular force of attraction that was acting between the liquid molecules because we know that the molecules that are on the surface are attracted by the molecules that are inside the liquid, right? And here also the same thing is happening. When the temperature is lower down, the molecules will slow down, right? So when the molecules will slow down, these intermolecular force of attraction will eventually dominate, 
right or the intermolecular force of attraction will increase between the liquid molecules right so when the intermolecular force of attraction decreases these molecules will come close to one another right to form to change into a solid form right liquid molecules will come close to an, one another to change into the solid form right so now let's suppose we add now so let's what could happen when these molecules come close to one another on addition of solute right now let's suppose we add a solute sodium chloride or any other solute to it when we add solute to it the solute particles will come if these are the liquid molecules so these are solute molecules let's say so these solute molecules will come in between the liquid molecules and will interfere with the freezing of these liquid molecules right this solute particles won't allow these liquid molecules to come close to one another to change into the solid form that is to freeze right so when these solute particles will interfere right in the coming close closure in coming in coming close closure of these liquid molecules we have to further lower down the temperature right of the surrounding so that they can eventually come close to one another and change into the solid form right so the addition of this solute resulted into the further decrease of the freezing point right so what basically the solid this solute particles did these solute particles interfered with the liquid molecules that are trying to align them right to form to change into the solid form right so they interfered with the alignment of these liquid liquid molecules right and that resulted into the depression of or the decrease in freezing point because we have to decrease the freezing point further so that they can come close to one another and change into the solid form right so we write so th this is clear in the beginning we said that the solid when the liquid changes into solid form at freezing point these two are in equilibrium right so when this solute molecules interfered between these liquid molecules at this point say this solute this liquid molecules when they are trying to change into solid form this solute particles interfered but this is at equilibrium so this solid is also trying to change into is also changing into the liquid form that is melting is also taking place in this process so the addition of solute affected only the freezing right only the freezing of liquid not the melting of solid right the melting of solid will continue but it's the freezing of solid that is i'm sorry the freezing of liquid that is affected by the addition of solute right and we will see that this has an great application i'm sorry the very important application in the melting of ice on roads right we know that when there is too much ice right during the snow time in hilly regions we add or we sprinkle calcium chloride or sodium chloride on the roads right so that ice can slowly uh, ice can slowly melt right ice can continue melting and basically what we are doing when we sprinkle sodium chloride or calcium chloride on streets right so as to melt the ice we are we are trying to prevent the freezing of water into ice right because if you look at this equilibrium because they are also these solute particles which are sodium chloride or calcium chloride is interfering with the liquid right to form ice right but ice is also this the, the system is at equilibrium the ice is also melting into liquid right into water so addition of sodium chloride or calcium chloride would not affect the melting of ice but it will affect the freezing of water into ice right so the freezing will take place at further lower te lower temperature 
right for example if you add sodium chloride it will decrease the freezing point by minus 21 degree celsius right so the freezing of water would not take place unless the temperature of the surrounding is minus 21 degree celsius right so ice will continue melting but won't freeze unless the temperature is 20 at minus 21 degree celsius similarly addition of calcium chloride will lower the lower the temperature to minus 55 degree celsius right so this is clear what basically our solute particle is doing what solute particles are doing to decrease or depress the freezing point right they are interfering with the alignment of liquid molecules to form solid right so now this is the expression like we have we did the expression for elevation in boiling point we have expression for similar expression for elevation and i'm sorry for elevation uh, sorry depression in freezing point which is delta tf which is depression in freezing point is equals to kf which is molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant multiplied by m which is molality of the solution molality is the concentration of solution we also say that the depression in freezing point is directly proportional to the concentration of solute which is molarity which is the number of moles of solute per 1000 kilogram per 1000 kilogram i'm sorry per 1 kilogram of solvent right or 1000 gram of solvent so if so uh, let's just explain uh, what is let's just define mathematically what is cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant if we take one molar solution one molar solution means one mole of solute in one kg of solvent so when you take one molar solution that is molality of solution is one unity then delta tf that is depression in freezing point is equals to cryoscopic constant so we define molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant as the depression in freezing point when the solution where or when the concentration of the solution is one molar right or when the molality of the solution is unity right so i'll repeat cryoscopic constant is equal is the depression in freezing point caused by the solution of caused by the solution whose molarity is unity that is one so from here we just look at this expression right to calculate the molecular mass of solute so how can we calculate the molecular mass of solute using the depression in freezing point right so using this expression if we if we know the molarity right we can calculate the molecular mass of the solute right and we know that molality is molality is moles of solute divided by moles of solute divided by divided by solvent in kilogram right moles of solute dissolved dissolved in 1 kilogram of solvent right so we know that moles is what is moles moles is grams of solute divided by is its molecular mass now let's say let's let's suppose w2 grams of solute and its molecular mass is m2 now let's suppose w2 grams of solute is dissolved in in w1 grams of solvent right so this is in kilograms if we convert it into grams it would be w1 divided by 1000 which is which is w2 upon m2 right into 1000 upon w1 
right so right so from here this is the molality and if we put the value of this in this expression right we will get the molecular mass right and if you look at this delta tf kf right and if we put the value of molality here like this right from here we can from here we can find m m is the molecular mass of solute right which is this right it would be this will come here w2 w2 upon w1 right on delta tf so this is the expression to calculate the molecular mass of solute and make sure you remember that this formula is applicable only for non-ionic solute or the non-volatile solute non-ionic solute means the solute that does not dissociate in solution that is suppose if the solute is potassium nitrate we know that potassium nitrate dissociate to form potassium and nitrate ions so this would not be applicable for the solutes that dissociate in solution so this is applicable only for non-volatile and non-ionic solutes right and there is one more expression for molar depression constant this expression wherein L lf is uh, latent heat of fusion of solvent and this is latent heat of fusion of one mole of solvent right so these are the these are the formulas that would be we would be using in numericals right so these are the two applications or importance of depression in freezing point the first one is in making antifree solutions what are antifree solutions the solutions that will not allow the freezing of liquid into solid and it has an important ap application right the areas where the temperature goes down extremely right there the cars can still run right even even because we know that the radiator of the car contains water right and when the temperature goes down water will turn into ice right but the water in the radiator right contains a solute ethylene glycol right which will which will decrease the freezing point of water so in the in in such weather in such a cold weather also the liquid would, would not freeze in the radiator of the car because of the addition of a solute ethylene glycol right which will decrease the freezing point of the water and water will remain in the liquid form similarly we have already discussed this in melting of ice on roads we just sprinkle sodium chloride or calcium chloride which will de decrease the freezing point right which will decrease the freezing point of liquid water right and uh, it will decrease suppose you add sodium chloride and sodium chloride will decrease the freezing point to minus 21 degrees celsius so water will not turn into ice unless the temperature of the surrounding is minus 21 degrees celsius right and the melting of ice will continue but the freezing won't continue until the temperature is minus 21 degrees celsius which is caused by the addition of 